Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. As any of you following along know, we're just about done with our 336 budget brush gun series. If you haven't seen that, check the link right up here for the playlist. We don't stay stagnant for long here, and we're going to step out of the world of lever actions into another favorite of ours, and that is precision shooting. We've got a barreled action from a Remington 700. This was actually a PCR rifle, so it came in a chassis, but ever since watching John McQuay, I've watched him for years, 8541 Tactical, phenomenal channel for precision shooting and NRL information. Definitely check him out. Uh, ever since I saw his Ultimatum Deadline project, I fell in love with the MDT ESS chassis and I had to have one. So even though the PCR came in a nice chassis, this is a better chassis in my opinion and I just I love the looks of it and now that I've got it in hand I love the fit and feel of it it fits me perfectly so very excited to be able to upgrade this rifle with this and as far as anybody wondering who doesn't know firearms is concerned this is a registered firearm it has been passed through all the proper channels to get to me and now everything I'm putting on it is basically like changing your shoes these are all accessories they're not controlled so everything here falls within YouTube's community guidelines so just bear that in mind. Also, if you guys want to help support the channel, don't forget to check out Mason Leather, linked in the description below. Use code WOLF10 and get 10% off your entire purchase. Does phenomenal leather. We've got his leather on our lever guns and absolutely love it. Super quality, really good stuff. And then also Big Daddy Unlimited. Use our affiliate link below, go sign up, and it's 99 cents for the first month and it goes up a little bit after that, but they are a phenomenal company to work with and they are revolutionizing the online gun store. You get firearms, ammo, accessories, the whole nine yards, and everything is at industry leading prices. I mean, nobody can beat what they've got going right now. It is really a great deal. And in turn for using our link, they know that we are a viable investment for them, so they help us out, be it ammunition or parts when we need something like that, and just, they're great people all around. We've been down there, did an 850 yard shoot with them, check the link right here. We actually took this rifle down to uh, Florida to meet Big Daddy Unlimited and do the shoot. We shot at 850 yards for our longest distance. We started out at four, then did six, and then did 850, and it did phenomenally well. We were extremely pleased with how well it shot, and I'm really excited to get it back in the chassis now so we can do some more long range shooting. Uh, Eventually, we want to get a custom action and a really nice barrel for this setup, but for now, we are building a homestead for those of you that don't know, and money is paramount right now with the way prices are going up on lumber because of COVID, so we're going to stick with the factory barrel action for now. Eventually, we will upgrade, but without further ado, let's get into what we're going to be putting on this rifle. First up, the heart of the system is the ESS chassis base, and guys, this thing is machined beautifully. It has a flat dark earth Cerakote on it, and I really love the fit and finish of this. They do a phenomenal job. Attached to that, we're going to go with a 15-inch full rail, and I went with a full rail for a couple of reasons. One, I really like the way it looks. It kind of looks like an AR because of the full flat top on it. We are considering getting a forward mounted night vision optic so that we can use it on different rifles. We have some coyotes in the area and it'd be nice to take care of those. Also, we're going to be doing some hog hunting so we can move it between ARs and this bolt action should we choose to because we've got the full rail. Now we could, they have another option for the rail and it has just a night vision mount up front or light or whatever you want to mount up there, but I just went ahead and got the full rail. I like the look. All right, next up we have the buttstock. The ESS chassis buttstock also works on the ACC chassis, and guys, this thing is awesome. It's extremely adjustable, very comfortable, and just does a great job. It fits me very well. They also have a collapsible version, but I went for the fixed version for now. If we ever build another one, I might go with the collapsible version because it does get pretty long when you got a 24-inch barrel on here. On top of this, we will be adding the Hoptic USA cheek pad, and it's just a little piece of closed cell foam and it 3M stickies basically to the top of it. A little softer rest for your face and it's nice on those cold mornings. When we get to the internals, we are going to be changing out the factory trigger. I don't think many people leave a factory trigger on a Remington 700. This is the Remington 700 trigger by Trigger Tech and this is the brand new two-stage trigger and we've got the flat trigger shoe and this is a special model. I've got this in another rifle I own and it is a super crisp trigger. A amazing reset and just it breaks like glass. Absolutely love it. Really a good option. On top of the rifle, we're going with a 20 MOA scope base, and this one is set up specifically for a full rail so that it will be a uniform alignment across the top. For our scope, we're going with a Ride On Optics X5 Conquer 5 to 25 by 50 with a 34 millimeter main tube. We've been using these scopes for a while now. We've got several Ride On Optics, and they're all superb quality. They're Japanese glass and just really really good scopes i think they're great contenders for something like the vortex razor line and 
just really crisp and clear. Underneath the rifle, we are going with the MDT Skypod. And guys, I gotta say, this is hands down one of my favorite bipods ever. It takes a little bit of getting used to because of the way the adjustments work, but how many bipods can you just do that with? I mean, it's so easy to adjust. Attaching that bipod to the rifle, we'll be using an MDT Arca rail, plain and simple. It's a good solid Arca rail, works extremely well. On the side of the rifle, we've got a Hoptic USA quiver with an extension to get the rounds closer back to the action. And I gotta say, these Hoptic USA quivers are rock solid mounts. They've got an adjustment screw on the back for each chamber. And what that allows you to do is fine tune it based on your cartridges so you can get a nice solid fit. You don't have to worry about the rounds slipping out when you're running around at a PRS match. These are an excellent option for any rifle. We also have them on a couple of our lever guns and they work extremely well. For the grip, we're gonna be using the MDT vertical grip. I really like this grip because it's adjustable for basically your finger's length of pull on the trigger. So you can adjust it so that your finger is in a natural spot every time you're shooting and it's repeatable every single time. And repeatability is key to accuracy. Also in front of the rifle, we're gonna go with the MDT Elite Muzzle Brake. Has a nice self-timing nut, so you don't have to worry about crush washers. Really easy to use, and it's in a very effective brake, especially with a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what this rifle is. And last but not least, we have the adjustable bag rider. This adjustable bag rider is basically the ultimate rear support for your rifle. As you guys see, when I turn this, I am barely moving that thread and that is fine tuning where that rifle would sit. Once you set it, it's not gonna move. This particular model is made to bolt in straight through the M-Lock rail on the back of the ESS chassis stock. And they make these adjustable bag riders for a lot of other uh, rifles, especially like the Ruger Precision Rifle, the Ruger Precision Rimfire, and just a lot of different options. Any of the stuff you see in this video that you wanna know more about, check the episode notes linked below, and that will take you to the link for all the different products all shown here. Okay, that's enough talking about all these parts. I'm sure you guys are ready for what you came here for. Today, we're gonna to start the build, and initially what we're gonna do is change out the trigger, and then we're gonna put the chassis on the rifle. After this, we're gonna do a different video, installing all the accessories and going over them in detail. Following that, we will install the scope base and scope and the muzzle brake. I'm gonna go ahead and wait on the muzzle brake because it needs to be timed properly. So when I level the rifle to mount my scope, it's gonna be level. Why not go ahead and mount the brake at the same time? Kill two birds with one stone. Well, that's enough, let's get to it. All right, so first up, let's take you through installing a Remington 700 trigger. Okay guys, when you're doing something like this, you always wanna make sure the rifle is unloaded. I have no bolt in here. I can easily see the rifle is clear. Now, when you're doing this, it's very simple. You only have two pins retaining the trigger, one at the front and one at the rear. The one at the front, you want to drive towards the bolt handle or ejection port. And the one at the rear, you want to drive, you have to flip the safety out of the way. You want to drive it away from the safety lever when driving the rear pin out, be mindful to not drive it all the way through the receiver because as you see, it is retaining the bolt release plate and the spring that operates that mechanism. So only drive it into this part of the receiver just enough to free up the trigger. It's really very simple, we'll do it now. So first off, I'm gonna drive this front pin out. I'm using a 5 fourths punch. First pin is out. Now I'm gonna to switch to the second pin And as you guys see, it is moving very, very easily. Still in there, so I'm gonna drive it a little bit more. I can actually push it by hand. Now I will simply pull that out and the old trigger is gone. One thing to keep in mind is these pins, uh, this is a fairly new rifle, so there's no corrosion or rust or anything inhibiting them moving. They merely sit in here and slide in place to retain that trigger. When this is dropped into the rifle or, uh, or chassis, they're retained because of the chassis being around it. They're not gonna go anywhere. Additionally, you can see this end is tapered, this end is flat. You want to slide the tapered end back in. Put it in the same way it came out. So now, I will drop my new trigger into place. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the front pin in and that taper helps this thing self-align as it's going in the hole. And you see I'm barely tapping, it's going right into place. Use a rubber mallet, guys. Don't use a steel mallet, you'll mar your finish. I'll set that a little better when I get done. And now I'm gonna drive the rear pin and it just slips right into place, nothing to it. 
I'm gonna use a punch to put this back where it goes. You don't wanna drive this too far. You don't wanna drive this front pin too far because it will intersect with that bolt release plate and it could cause a malfunction when it comes to releasing your bolt. So make sure you're pretty centered on both of them. All right, let's get the chassis installed. Okay guys, we have the base and we've got the buttstock. First thing we're gonna do is install the buttstock to the base because it's a lot easier in the small confined area that I'm in to go ahead and install the buttstock on here versus trying to do it when I have a 24 inch barreled action installed in this base. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the buttstock bolt and then I'm gonna drop this into its channel. It has two basically uh, keys that help align it in that channel. And then I'm gonna drop this bolt back in here and I will finger tighten it at first as far as I can because as you see, there's not a lot of room to work here. And because there's not a lot of room to work, a lot of people will use a ball end Allen wrench, but I've found that you can use a standard Allen as long as you don't mind making very short runs and just going over and over and over and over again. And it's not that far to go really. And ball end socket or ball end uh, Allens can be difficult to find. Sometimes you have to order them and most everybody has a set of Allen wrenches. And sorry guys, offhand, I don't remember what size Allen this is, so I will drop it on the screen now. All right, that bad boy's tight. Let's install it on the action. All right, now installing the chassis is really very simple. Drop it over your trigger, recoil lug in place, and slide the chassis all the way to the front. You look down in here, you will see that the holes line up, and you're gonna have two action screws. Short one goes up front, Long one goes in the back, and these are a 5 30 seconds uh, screw. And here I do have a ball end wrench. I bought it with my Fix It Sticks uh, torque driver kit because it's an extended one, makes it a lot easier to get down in here and get these at the back. And I'm going to go ahead and get these semi snug just to make sure they're in place. And now I'm going to use my torque driver. And I got the all-in-one torque driver. It does anything from zero to 65 inch pounds. And I'm gonna start out at 45 inch pounds on these. Uh, a lot of people go 55, 65, you know, and also go by your manufacturer's recommended specs. I'm gonna start out at 45 and I may inch it up a little bit here and there and see how it does. This torque wrench works really well. Uh, all it is is a simple line on the side and you twist it until you reach the line of the desired inch pounds that you're at. So it's, it's really easy to use, it's foolproof and it's one unit to cover anything from zero to 65 inch pounds instead of multiple different ones. I also have a fat uh, uh, Wheeler Products fat wrench and it does a good job, but it's not super precise. It's hard to tell where that line is lining up at. So I really like this because of that. It's very easy to read. And there's my 45. Oop. And there's my 45. All right, chassis installed. Now that the rifle's already upside down, I'll go ahead and install the vertical grip. And it has an inner portion and then two outer panels that slide on. So I will back out the grip screw, drop that on. It's just like an AR-15 grip. Any AR-15 grip will work on this, but you wanna make sure you don't have that uh, beaver tail basically that sticks up on the back because that could interfere with this. So you want something that is a flat top AR-15 grip. For those of you wondering, this is a 3 16 bolt. Really nothing to this install, very simple. Torque that down nice so it's a good solid fit. And now I'm gonna put these side panels on. Okay, so you can see we have three screw holes. There's actually six, three on each side of this grip mount. And that corresponds to the three holes in each grip panel. When I flip the grip panel over, you see the channel is wider than this mount. That allows you to slide this grip back and forth as needed to adjust for your finger. 
The adjustability of this grip allows you to position your finger for the maximum comfort and repeatability to give you the best precision shot you can get. So I know for my grip, and I've got big hands, I like this all the way to the back. So I'm going to slide that to the back. Each screw has a washer with it, and it uses a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. So we get that started. I'm not going to snug them up yet. I want to make sure they're all straight and where they need to be. Make sure it is where you want it before you snug it up. Then snug those up nice and tight. And then repeat the process on the other side. All right, guys, we're down to the last part of the chassis, and that's going to be the handguard. So, still got the rifle inverted. I'm going to slide this down the barrel. And it has a little key that engages in here, so it won't slide around once you get it set. I'm going to hold it up here, and I'm going to drop my three screws into these holes. And one thing I'm going to do here is I will reverse thread as I'm screwing these in because I don't want to strip these out. So I'll put my screwdriver in. This is a 530 seconds, by the way. I run it backwards until I feel that thread catch, and then I start tightening it up. I'm not going to go super snug yet. I want to get all these started just in case it wasn't perfectly aligned. But everything is lining up beautifully. And there we go. That's it, guys. The chassis is installed, and I think this looks great. I cannot wait to do the next series of videos and get everything mounted on here, get the scope on here, and go out to the range and do some shooting. We've got a 300-yard range we can use around here, and we are definitely going to put this to the test. We're going to try the gun out with a lot of different ammo. We're going to test out the adjustable bag rider and show you the difference in accuracy you can gain by using that over just using the chassis, which we know a chassis already greatly improves your abilities over a standard stock. But then when you add the adjustable bag rider to the back, it even compounds that improved accuracy. It's really a great setup. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a big thumbs up for a like, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Big Daddy Unlimited and Mason Leather and check back often guys. Have a good one.